Hi guys. Hi guys, Angie Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, second, let me come up and get myself in focus here. Okay, you guys, we're gonna work in the, my altered book again. I have another cool idea to for another page of my altered book. Now, what you guys are looking at, um, oh, and I wanna say this before I start. Thank you guys so much. I've gotten some, so many nice compliments on my mixed media that I've been working on lately. And um, you guys have just been so supportive and said so many kind words. So I just wanna say thank you. And I just hope to give you guys ideas and inspire you and for you to have fun. Because that's what this is all about, having fun. Okay, now, this is a junk journal. This isn't actually an altered book. But in my junk journal, I created this thing called an altered page. And um, and what it is, is you make you take a, a, a page, like, let me show you, like a music note page, okay? And then you layer on another page like that so that this becomes a pocket and then you can put another one here to become another pocket so originally I had the first layer right here let me take this stuff out which is right here that's the original page and I also took it and I sewed the whole thing I sewed all around with my sewing machine with some brown thread um, also all three of these pages I coffee dyed and then, um, and you don't have to coffee dye because you can just go ahead and use some of your distressed inks. They don't have to be distressed inks. You can use just regular ink pads too. But I used rusty hinges. Um, I probably used, because I did this a while back, some vintage photo. I might have used some tea dye. Now you can just go into your other inks like um, cocoa. You can use that. Um, if you have some uh, walnut stain, you can use that. You can use Ranger's sepia, which is gorgeous, and distress with that too. Okay, so you, I've done both though. I coffee stained it, and then after I coffee stained it, I started using all my distressed inks to make it look aged. Okay, let me back up though. So you have your first page. Then you um, go ahead. Now it looks like I sewed all this together. I just went ahead and it sewed on the outline of all the pages, but I actually glued them together, hot glued them together. Um, with some hinges and we'll go through that so there's your second piece of paper here and you create another pocket and then there's your third piece of paper here and you create another pocket and then um, I decorated the the bottom here oops sorry guys I decorated the side here with a bunch of flowers now I won't do that in my in my um, altered book because this book is already gonna be really really you know stuffed and big but I love this idea and I thought this would be great to put in my altered book and in your little pockets that you create you can put tags like I made this tag it's not gorgeous it's made out of book pages which I sewed and then I layered all this stuff on it uh, burlap uh, some lace under here some um, fringy stuff a button lace and then a cool picture of like this um, gypsy girl this is um, from a Sears catalog, and I put a little bit of, uh, like, took a bunch of little scraps and put made a little scrappy little embellishment there. Same thing with this. It's a Tim Holtz ephemera piece. Made a little embellishment with a little piece of paper and a little piece of um, fabric and a button and this little thing. Do you see what I'm saying? And then things I collect, like these cards. I got these at Michael's when they were on clearance for 50 cents, and I aged them out a little bit. This is just a little receipt. So it's kind of like you're able, and I made this button card out of a um, dress form from my, what is it called? My brother's scanning cut. This is an actual die in the my brother's scanning cut. So you can use anything, any of your junk. So it's almost like mix, mixing up mixed media. What well, it is, it's, mix, it's mixing up mixed media and junk journaling together, which I've been influenced so much to do that by Marie Jenkins. Love Lori Marie. Jenkins I love that she's really gotten me out of the box and because I love to do junk journaling but then I also love to do mixed media and you can do everything together and it makes it even more cool so I thought so let me put this away this is an actual a junk journal a vintage junk journal that's what the front of it looks like I think that's pretty cool I love doing this this was really fun I need to make another one of these anyway <laughs> and see how I did a mixed media um, uh, cover. I'm looking for my darn mirror. Okay. 
and I did a mixed media cover. It's pretty cool. Okay. And look how nice and thick that is and juicy. Love that. Okay, I might put this aside. So that's what we're going for. Okay, so it's like always, I've always prepped a little bit and done a little bit ahead of time for the sake of time of this video. Okay, just a second. There we go. So we're going to be working over here. So what I've done ahead of time is I knew that I needed to cover up some of this up here so that you have you could we'd be looking at like book pages and music notes I didn't want to just have a blank space up here okay um, also let me just tear this off I went right over the edges so that I would have I could bring my this ephemera or these collage bits right up to the edge so there we go okay so we have that done also before you start because I already had done some, this is another page I did, which I'm going to show you guys how I did this. This turned out really pretty, I think. I have already glued together three pages together. Two to three pages. I think in this book, I'm only gluing two pages. A lot of books, you know, the pages are thinner, so you need to glue three together. So you have a good, solid base to work off of. But that's already been done because it's the other side of this page here. So if you have, if you have a page that, that you need to thicken up, glue two to three pages together. Okay. Next. What we're going to start doing is we're going to start putting on like our pockets, right? So I have this here and this needs to go just about right here. And actually, let me think about something. I need this to be lower, so I actually shouldn't have done that. Just a minute, I'm working some stuff out. Yeah. That's how I want to do it. Okay, so what I did is, is I like to make these things called hinges. And what it does is when you, these are what the hinges are. Like on the back of here, that's what the hinges are. And I'm going to show you how to make them and how to apply them. So that you, when you stuff your um, pockets, you can stuff them a lot more because of these hinges. It allows for a lot more space. Okay, so when you're here, it allows you to really stuff those, those um, pockets up. But what I did was, is I kind of messed up because I need to cut this off at about right here. And I already had put my hinges on the bottom, but not a big deal. We'll just cut this off. And it may not be making sense right now, but as I keep going, it'll make more sense, I promise. So let me just cut this off. So right now, I'm just, I might be off camera. I just got to cut this off. And then we'll put another hinge on. And I'm going to show you how to make the hinges. I'm going to show you how to put the hinges on. Okay? Okay. So now, that needed to go about like, just about like that. Okay. The other thing I did, I should let you know, is I went into, went to my sewing machine. Well, first of all, I did copy dye this and I and baked it in the oven. So when you copy dye it, you make like, get a little bowl or a little tray. I get the coffee from Dollar Tree. The instant coffee or you can just make your coffee at home make it strong dip the paper in real quick and then put it on a cookie sheet put it in your oven at about 200 degrees watch it and look for it to brown up real nice okay so that's what I did there then I took it to my sewing machine which you don't have to do this if you don't if you have a sewing machine but I think it looks really cool I went to my sewing machine and just sewed all around this whole thing okay even though we're gonna actually because I have the hinges on here we're gonna actually hot glue this down it'll stay a lot better they even, you know, double stick tape. Okay, but I want it to look like we sewed it in. But it's a trick of the eye. We didn't sew it in. Okay, so um, let me show you about this hinge. I'm just going to put the hinge down here, but then I'm going to turn around and show you guys how to make these hinges. So, just a second. I'll show you right now how this hinge is going to go on here. And like I said, don't worry, I'm going to back up and show you how to make these hinges and how to put all these hinges on. I just need to fix this one. Okay. And then I use hot glue just like this to glue these hinges on. Oh my gosh, I'm low on the glue. All right, let me put this on as much as I can. I 
don't know why I made that hinge a little short, but that's crazy, but it'll be fine. Okay, so there we go like that. Um, let me grab some glue sticks here. You guys may be shaking a little bit because I gotta move you out of the way for a second to grab some, some glue sticks. Okay, sorry about that. Um, here we go. Like I said, I may not be as clear as you guys want yet, but I will be here in just a second. I have to quit, I just have to really quick kind of fix my own mistake. So let me show you how to create this. Okay, so this one goes and this one's gonna go on top of here, I think. Yeah. There we go. I kind of wanted it the other way. Just a second, I'm working things out, but I can't because I cut this off. Okay, I was right the first time. Anyway, you guys, moving on. <laughs> we need to put some, we need to make some hinges. Let me show you how to make the hinges. Okay, you need to take your scoreboard. I've shown this quite a few times, but I will show it again. Let me move this book out of the way. You can use whatever color cardstock you want that's going to match your project. I'm going to use this brown cardstock. All right. So, to make these hinges, you get a scoreboard and your, your um, phone folder. And at every inch, you're going to score. And you guys, when you see something like this, don't get scared. This is as hard as it is, and it's not hard at all. So don't even worry. It's not hard at all. Sometimes people see you break out with a scoreboard and a bone folder and some measurements, and they're like, ah, that's how I am. But that's it. So now you have your cardstock. Oops. You have your cardstock scored. Then every, two, every, every second one you want to cut. I already cut up a bunch over here on the side. Okay. I'm going to put this side and save this for later, but then there's a score right here, right? So you just put that in half. All right, so now you have a hinge. That's how easy hinges are to make. Okay, so let's put some hinges on here. We need to put a hinge here, here, and on the bottom. Make sure that I got this right. All right, here we go. So this is the full length of that. So we're going to glue our hinge on here. And because we're dealing with all with cardstock, um, I like to use hot glue instead of like uh, double stick tape. Oh, and I should tell you guys this. I got these images. This is the um, Sears and Robot catalog. I made copies of that onto what? Onto um, car white cardstock. Then I copied item, like I told you, and then I baked them. So that's where I got these images. You can go on to. Um, eBay and right around 10 bucks, I think is what I got them for. You can um, order Sears and Robot catalogs, and I think they're not the originals, I think they're remakes. But, um, and that's where I got these cool images from. And then this one here is just a music note paper <clears throat> that I copied on to cardstock. You guys see those holes? That was because I was working on a junk journal, I was going to use this in a junk journal, and I didn't end up using it in there. So the holes are for no reason. Well, they were because I needed them for the junk journal, but now I'm not 
using them in the junk journal I'm using in this project. So I know someone's like, why do you have those holes? So that's why. So we don't need those holes there. In fact, I could even put some rivets there. It'd be kind of cool looking, but I'm not. Not right now. Okay, so let's just take off a little bit of the excess here. Okay. All right, so now we have that. See how our hinges are? We need one more hinge, and the hinge needs to fit all the way across. I don't So I'm going to cut that. And now that should fit right here. And you want to make sure that you go, you don't go right in the crease. You want to be a little ways from the crease so that um, these can fold. So these can still fold in, right? So if you put it right on the crease, these won't be able to fold. So I'm a little bit away from the crease. Perfect. Again, hot glue. And using hot glue like this, you're really ensuring that this all stays together. Even when I do junk journals, a lot of times I um, I use hot glue instead of using double stick tape or score tape. I don't always use score tape. Sometimes I hot glue things in. Especially if the papers are getting kind of thick like this. Okay, so then what you want to do is you want to put a little glue here like that and then seal that down. And then, just making sure you guys, I'm still in frame. Yeah, perfect. Then you want to, oh, right here would be perfect, because then I know where I'm going to. Right there, and then bam, over. Be careful not to burn the hell out of yourself. Okay, just a second, you guys. On my iPad, I'm looking at it right now. And it's saying that uh, it's on very low battery, so I just want to keep charging my iPad up. Because I love to watch my iPad when I'm crafting. I love to watch all of you guys. You guys give me so much inspiration, so many ideas. You guys totally keep me going, that's for sure. Okay. All right, so now we have all the hinges on here, okay? So, where is this going? Let's put that right here. Catch my video that shows how you prepare your book. Like, if you want to alter a book and you want to do, um, you want to do um, art journaling in a altered book, I'll show you how to prepare your altered book, and I'll add that video onto here. Just real quick, before we make this page, I just want to show you, share with you guys some things I've been doing in this altered book. Um, okay. These are the things I've done so far, and I'll be doing videos on pretty much all these. Did that turn out cool? I love these. I got this Hummingbird magazine. My husband made me buy it. You guys, that Hummingbird magazine... I got it at the grocery store. It was like $10. You guys know I am cheap. And I was like, $10? I can't spend $10 in a book like a magazine like that because I'm going to be ripping it up. My husband's like, exactly. I'm like, oh my gosh. He's so sweet to me. Look at this book, you guys. It's a book full of hummingbirds. This is like the one I have that's full of watches. I love hummingbirds. Oh. Love this book, you guys. Anyway, it ain't cheap. It's it was ten ninety nine, but that's what the book looks like, you guys. And oh, it's just so full of hummingbirds. So I'll be tearing a lot of good stuff out of that. So that's why I made this page. Then I made this one. You guys just recently saw this. I did a video on this one. It's out right now. I think it was out since this morning or yesterday. And then I did this one. Um, I learned this from um, Marie Jenkins. 
what is her name? Let me make sure I have her name right. I have it written over here. Lori Marie. Lori Marie Jenkins. You guys have to check her out. I will leave her link below. She's really been inspiring to me about these type of um, altered books. Um, she has this thing where she does two pockets. And I'll go over this technique of how she creates these pockets. She doesn't actually take a separate piece of paper like we normally do in junk journals and add this in here. She actually folds the pages up after she glues them together to make these pockets. Anyway, it's really cool. So I did this one. This drawing right here is a mermaid that I drew and painted myself. Um, these are napkins here, and this is a cool background that I did. And then there'll be I'll be making tags, and I'll be doing that on video too, making tags to put in here. This was really cool. This is a picture I've had for a while. I cannot tell you. I found it in a magazine, and it only it was only it was cut off about right here. So I added this big rose on the top, which I think came out really cool, and. I learned this from um, Lori Marie also of taking a picture and dividing it up and making it into like a secret pocket. See, so that's a pocket right there. Isn't that cool? But her face continues on this page up here and it's on the lower part of her face is on the pocket. So that was really cool. Um, also, I learned this from her. I've done this before, okay, where you have a flap like this. Um, but I haven't done it where I've made it like, I usually have the flap all the way down and then I lift it up. But it's more like a little tag. I seen her do it like this. So it's just a little different way of how I've done it. But I do always make, not always, but a lot of times I make my own hinges. How we, how we just made the hinges. You can also use the hinges for the part that you flip up. See? Use it as a flip. So cool. You can also decorate, you can make this white and then decorate uh, and make it blend into the background if you want. I liked this black, so I just left it like that. Then here, I took that same girl and I copied her in a white image. And then I used my pink Prismacolor pencils. No, not Prismacolor pencils. What are these? Wait, maybe they're Prismacolor. Yeah, a very, very light pink Prismacolor pencil. You know how you see the black and white images and then just certain parts are colored? I did that with my Prismacolor pencil. On her lips, on the flower here, on the rose, on the big rose. And then I did a cool background. I love this. I love how this came out. So I'll be doing this on camera. This again is that technique that she tells you how you make these pockets. These pockets, I kind of messed this one up over here, but this is how it's supposed to look perfectly done. Um, one, two. So you have two pockets here and you have two pockets over here. And I decorated this whole thing with um, collage bits first, which she calls underpants. Uh, Lori Marie does, but I call them collage bits. And then I use napkins. And I have some gorgeous napkins, you guys. So I'm using the heck out of those napkins. I think this turned out so beautiful. I absolutely love it. So we'll do this page together. Then um, this right here, I think, turned out so beautiful. This is just a bunch of layering. And I love these images. There's this lady. I can't even say her name. She's from another country. She makes these dolls. These dolls are absolutely gorgeous. I have. She has a bunch of pictures of them and so I went ahead and um, download this into my computer so you'll be seeing a lot of these type of dolls in my work and then this is a bunch of really cool techniques I used um, for the background this right here I did learn from uh, Lori Marie again she inspired me with this page um, I loved how she did this technique this is using this is using um, molding paste or I use a wall compound through a stencil and then paint it all black. And after you paint it all black, you sand it and then there's some white space left. And then I use like, um, like a berry color like that where all the white space was. And then I found this girl, it's a beautiful doll and I put my own little flowers on her. I think it turned out really pretty. Um, this is a Native American with, again, um, a stencil background with that uh, wall compound or the uh, texture paste. And this is my own drawing of a Native American. This is one that's done through with a um, chicken wire window. Isn't that cool? This I learned from Lori Marie. I love th this idea. I had to do it. And this is my own drawing of a Native American. Uh, this is a Native American warrior that I drew. I love Native American culture. I love Native American warriors. And this is another Native American warrior that I drew, hand drew and painted. And put that right here in the middle. And then a, some really cool 
mixture of, um, what do you call it? Background, really cool background. And then again, that goes there. So anyway, I just wanted to share what I've done so far in my book. I've done some other stuff in my smaller books too, but at least that's what I've done in this book. And I'll be showing you guys how I did these different techniques. Okay. Okay. So we're on this one right now. Okay. So here we go. I hope if you weren't interested in any of that, you just went ahead and skipped ahead. You're like, girl, I do not care. <laughs> like, I do not care about all that. Okay. So what we need to do is we need to hot glue all of this on. I'm trying to think if I need to be down here, even shorter. You know what? I feel like I do. All right. I need to cut this one again. I want this one to be even shorter so that you can see more of the music notes right there. So just a second, I'm going to cut this and cut this. And then I'll have to redo the, um, the hinge on it, but oh well. Things are not always perfect, that's for sure. Okay. Because this is how I want to set it up like this. Okay, guys? So I need to put another hinge on the bottom here. Good thing I have a lot of extra hinges. All right, got to cut another hinge here. I always keep those hinges really handy because I never know when I'm going to need to make a hinge. Okay. There and then right to here. All right. Oh, I didn't mean to put that in there. Okay, so here we go. Make sure I got this. Okay. So let's go ahead and put the hot glue on. Okay. Be careful not to burn yourself. I'm running this to the side a little bit because this is easier for me right now. Okay, and then let's... But you know, that's kind of good I messed up because then you guys get to see me do this twice. So it makes more sense. Hold that together. So now we have the hinges there. Okay. So this one needs to go down first, and then this one will go down on top of that. Okay. So let's do this one first. Okay. And I like to leave the strings out like that because I just think it looks kind of messy, and I like messy. I like a mess. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see if I want to do all this hot glue. Let's let's go for it, you guys. Let's try to do the hot glue all at one time. We can go fast. We can do it before it dries. When you do this, make sure your hot glue gun is full because you need to hurry up. Don't be too much of a hurry and burn yourself. Okay. Oh, we did it. Make sure you don't go into the seam right here in the middle too much because you want the book to close still. So we're good. <clears throat> and we know this is, a, so there's a little pocket right there, right? Okay, let me bring this down a little bit so you guys are seeing that. 
and there's a pocket right there. All right, next, we need to put this right down here. And that'll be your second pocket. So you have one, two. You can even make three pockets. I could put another one right here. I'm not going to today, but we could. Okay, again, let's hurry and do the hot gluing. Kind of close to the edge, kind of not, because that's where you need to have it at. Okay. Make sure things are kind of lining up here. All right. What a difference already. Isn't that crazy, you guys? We went from some blank page that was kind of half done with this stuff at the top to this all of a sudden. Isn't that like magic? So quick. And if you don't have um, a, a Sears and Robot catalog for this, you can use music note paper and, and, glue, and copy it on a cardstock or whatever ephemera you have. You can even just use your own scrapbook paper, you know? Use some Tim Holtz scrapbook paper. That would make this cool. It's the idea of, of altering this page, but you can use whatever paper you want. This is what I'm choosing to use. And this whole thing should close still good. Yeah, we're able to close this. Actually, I could. I may have to trim that off a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. Okay, so that looks awesome. Let me move my book over a little so you can see. Yeah, that looks really cool. What I'm trying to do is so you guys can see everything. It's a really big book. Okay. Next. Um, did I talk about how I did this up here at the top? All I did was use um, some collage bits, like little torn pieces of, of uh, book paper and music note paper. And when I did that, you guys, I did use decoupage, um, Mod Podge or decoupage glue. I didn't take the decoupage glue, though, and put it on top of here because I want it to be very, um, I want to see all the music notes and the book pages because I'm going to rub um, the distressed ink over it. And I don't want anything to interfere with that at all. So I didn't put any, I didn't seal this at all with any decoupage uh, or Mod Podge at all, is what I'm trying to say. Okay. So, now, even though these are coffee stained, these aren't, we're going to make all this look very similar. So, let's take, I have so much stuff over here I want to use. Um, cool. Rusty hinges first. I love, I am obsessed with some rusty hinges. Actually, let's not do rusty hinges first. Let's do vintage photo. You guys, if you don't have these distressed inks or distressed oxide inks by Tim Holtz, when they have a sale on that stuff, I am telling you guys, it is worth the investment. And when it's on sale, you'll be able to pick it up pretty cheap. I mean, I think these are maybe like six, five or six dollars. You'll be able to pick them up for like two fifty, three bucks when they're on sale. So, or if they're not on sale, um, just uh, use a coupon. But they're well worth, and they last forever, you guys. I The only colors I've ever had to rebuy is this vintage photo, this one right now that I'm using. I've only bought, never, and in the last six years, I think I've bought, this is my second or third one. They, like, last forever. And I guess he has re-inkers, but I've never bought, I've never seen the re-inkers. Okay, another thing you can do is, Tim Holtz has these type of things where you, like, these bunch type of things. I'm trying to think what these are. I bought these in the kids section and they feel very marshmallowy from Joann's and that's what I use for my blender brush. My blender. I couldn't get in here over here so that's why I'm using this blender over there. Okay so that's vintage photo. That's what that looks like. Fabulousness. -ness. Okay there's another one called T-Dye which is just a very faint Distressed ink. It's very pretty. Okay, now let's go to some rusty hinges. That's what the rusty hinges looks like. This is a fabulous color. This makes it look really rusted. Look what it does. Love this stuff. Love rusty hinges. Okay. I can get a little crazy with rusty hinges. Like I just did, but we're good. Okay, so that looks rusty. 
Then I want to go in with some walnut stain. And I want to go in some walnut stain, like especially like the edges and the corners. So we're going to do that next. I'm going to use one of these marshmallowy things. And I can't remember what the heck these were. I think I said they're in the children's section at um, ha Joanne's. And I think I paid $5 for a bag of them. But they're great because you can use them as your applicators. Tim Holtz sells his, but they're really expensive. So I can't remember what the heck these even were. Anyway, that's where I found them. Um, and so I want to go up to the edges. Walnut stain is a great color for um, just being really dark and muddy. I love it. Everybody always wants to get... Um, and you should, vintage photo. But if you're gonna get vintage photo, you def these are the three I'd say to get. Get vintage photo, I would get walnut stain, and I would get um, rusty hinges. Those are the th main three I would get. And then after that, I would pick up tea dye. Because you will use, these are, the th these are the four that I use the most out of all of them. The rest of them, I don't really use that much. I need to like start incorporating those in my work because I have them. So, what I did to collect them all is I waited till Tim Holtz had a sale, and then I also waited for like twenty percent off coupon. So I think they were like probably like thirty or forty percent off, and then a twenty percent coupon came out that said that you can uh, use it on sale items, and uh, I did that. Even just the thirty or forty percent off is good. I don't know if I bought them all at one time or if I took two sales to do it. I probably took two sales to collect, collect them all. Sorry if I, my hand was just in the way the whole time. Get myself out of the way. So when you want to do a big area and you just want it to look kind of messy, you can just take this right to the thing. But when you want to um, kind of be in specific areas, use something like this. I do want to tone down this rust a little bit, so I am going to go over it with this. Oh, I love it. Go over it with this a little bit, just to tone down that rust a little. Perfect. That rust can be pretty strong, but that looks perfect. That's what I wanted. Okay. Then... You know what else I'm going to do? I'm going to do um, some inking on the edges. So here you can use, I always talk about this, you can use a Stabilo, you can use a black watercolor pencil, wet your finger with a little bit of spit, water, a little baby wipe action. Um, I got the spit idea from Lori Marie, that's what she uses. <laughs> it cracks me up. Or you can use a Fabri-Castell or Gelato with a baby wipe or a little wet finger and we can go along the edges. You can also use the Tim Holtz Distress Ink in black to do this too. There's so many ways to do this kind of distressing. Um, just a second, I'm gonna use a baby wipe on that because it's a little that's a little intense with the black. Let me look at my camera and see what you guys are seeing. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of want this blended out, blended out a little bit and a little bit smokier, not so deep. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what I want it right there. Okay, so you can use a baby wipe also. That's a third idea. So I'm going to take this. This is not a gelato. I don't even know if I have gelatos. I think I have these, Fabrica Cells. They're a little bit cheaper. In fact, let me show you something. I bought a crap load of these. Didn't need to, but okay. Look, these are these are the Faber Castells, twelve gel sticks, and they say that they're the same as um, as the gelatos, and they are, and they're in the kids section at Hobby Lobby. These were regularly like, what was it, fifteen bucks? I got them for three seventy five, you guys. So you know, I went ape. You know what? I'll tell you another thing you can use. I got these at Hobby Lobby. That with that 75 or 90 percent off, they were 14. dollars I got them for 350. They're the water soluble crayons, so you can use these for the same way. I could do that with that same black or the brown there, too. So you can use those just how I use these inks, okay? 
and, and age things out. So use acrylic paint and do the same thing. Maybe you just have to water it down just a little bit. I always try to give you guys options of different um, 